moving on with this very politically incorrect sermon. Here's the next thing. God allows killing for self-defense because God values life. I know we got a lot of guys in the room. You got gun owners and, you know, you're waiting for this one. Here it comes. Okay, so it says this in Exodus 22. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is struck and killed in the process, the person who killed the thief is not guilty of murder. But if it happens in daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of murder. Okay, so I'm going to explain that second part there. But this is a very similar law to the law that we have in Arizona. And in Florida and Texas, it's called the Castle Doctrine. It exists in other free states as well. And <laughs> this basically says... <laughs> uh, I love this church. <laughs> I love it. Basically says, you know, if someone breaks into your house, you have the right to use deadly force. So you can just kind of imagine, right? If someone breaks into your house, boom, middle of the night, goes bump. Wife leans over. is like, honey, I heard something. Go check it out. And he's like, you check it out. (laughs) And she's like, no, Pastor Ryan said, be a man. Be a man. So he gets up and he goes down the hallway with his golf club or his shotgun or whatever, you know, and, he, and if he swings and he hits the guy and the guy dies, the law says that guy is not guilty of murder. And, and it might be sad that somebody died, but you know what God's attitude is? Dude shouldn't have been breaking into houses. <laughs> you don't want to get killed, don't break into houses. But in the second half of this verse, but if it happens in the daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of murder. What does that mean? So what this is, not, this is talking about is You go and find the guy who stole your DVD player the next day, and you shank him. God says, no, 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 no. That's not cool. That's not cool. That's not justice. That's vengeance. Okay, so you see the same God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Self-defense is justified. Because God values human life. This is why Moses was justified in killing the Egyptian. Because God values the life of that Hebrew who is being unjustly beaten, maybe beaten to death. And this passage in Exodus 22 is consistent with what you read in the New Testament. Because God is the same. He does not change. In Romans 12, 19, it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So right here. That doesn't say you can't defend yourself from someone who's attacking you, but defending yourself is different than avenging yourself. Avenging yourself is getting even, settling the score, going after someone else when you don't have to. God will settle the score. But what about Jesus, Pastor Ryan? Jesus was so nice and he was so kind and he was always caring for people and feeding people. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus say about this? Well, I'll show you. Luke 22, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he asked them, When I sent you out to preach the good news, and you did not have money, a traveler's bag, or an extra pair of sandals, did you need anything? No, they replied. But now, Jesus said, take your money and a traveler's bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. That's the prophecy. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they replied, we have two swords among us. That's enough, he said. Okay, this is a passage that people don't talk about. They don't talk about this. Did you know Jesus told these guys to get a sword? Did you, did you, ever, you ever memorize that Bible verse as a kid? No. No. Okay, so what's happening here? Okay, the first time Jesus sent out his disciples to preach the good news, he specifically told them, don't take anything with you. No money, no supplies. Why? It's because he wanted to build their faith. Do you remember how they came back from that journey full of faith? They were like, Jesus, you're not gonna believe it. We did miracles in your name. And even demons obeyed us when we cast them out. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because demons obey you. Rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. Right? Remember that? It was building their faith. It was like Jesus was sending them out with training wheels. 
Because these were the guys he was going to use to build his church. So he needed to encourage them that God can provide for your needs. God can take care of you. Just go and God's going to make a way. But now, in that passage, but now, that was the first time, but now take a traveler's bag, bring money, and get yourself a sword. Well, what's going on there? Jesus is basically saying, the first time I sent you out to build your faith, I sent you out by my power. This time, going forward, I'm going to send you out by my power and your good planning. So, So go ahead, bring yourself supplies and get you a sword. Why? Because they're going to face danger. It's the prophecy about me is going to be fulfilled. He's counted among the rebels. You're going to be considered criminals because of me. You're going to face danger because of me. And he wanted them to be able to defend themselves and stay alive long enough to tell people about him. So they're there like, well, we got two swords. Like in modern times, it's like, we got a Glock and an AR-15. <laughs> and Jesus is like, that's enough. But it's actually interesting. He says, that's enough. And that tells you he didn't want them to raise an army and conquer in his name. He just wanted them to take reasonable precautions to defend themselves as they preached his name. You see that? So today we are unfortunately in a situation where we see in the news reports of mass shootings or something like that. You know, it's terrible. Of course, the media just plasters it across our face. And people are so shocked when they see this, because it is terrible. And you just wonder, like, how could this even happen? And, and then you have people around us in society. They want someone to blame. They want something to blame. And so they usually turn their attention on the guns. And they'll be like, guns did this. Guns killed those people. But I would propose to you that guns are just tools. Guns are tools like a hammer or a chainsaw. A tool is not it does not have an intrinsic moral value. You can use the same tool for good or for evil. You can use a hammer to beat someone to death or to build your kid a birdhouse. It's just a tool. What matters is how you use it. So you got a lot of people in society that ra- rather than looking in the mirror and facing the depravity of man and the fact that we just raised a fatherless generation because of the sexual depravity of our nation, They just want to blame an inanimate object. It's true. Guns don't kill people. People kill people with weapons. And I would actually say guns save people. In 2013, President Obama commissioned a report from the CDC and different federal agencies. And they estimated that as many as 3 million violent crimes are prevented each year by law-abiding citizens with guns. That's 8,200 per day. And in many of those cases, no shots were even fired, no blood was shed. It's just the fact that there was a gun present that prevented the crime. 66% of economists and criminologists state state that gun-free zones are more likely to attract criminals than they are to deter them. It's just common sense. And then I like this. 60% of convicted felons admit that they avoided committing crimes when they knew the victim was armed. And 40% of convicted felons admitted they avoided committing crimes when they thought the victim might be armed. So as a Christian, I love guns. And it's not because of political party affiliation or because I'm an Arizonan. It's because I love justice. I love God and God loves justice. And a tool like a gun gives a 130-pound woman the potential opportunity to fight off a would-be raping murderist who outweighs her by 100 pounds. So I like that. I know, this is a strange sermon, right? It's like you haven't heard a sermon like this.